No. We're doing Second Kings for the men's for the men's uh, study, and um, so I was kind of like reading on and thinking, oh man, this 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 is really interesting when you get into this stuff. It really is, you know, kind of like hanging around the block. You know, I was in the neighborhood of uh, Second Kings, so uh, so that's why I wanted to go there. Um, and stay consistent, kind of like being Italian. I go to an Italian restaurant, what do I get? Spaghetti. When I go to Mama Luis's, what do I get? Spaghetti. You know? Olive Garden, spaghetti. Okay, so I'm, I'm nice and consistent. So I, I just kind of read ahead and, uh, and going through all that. But if you would flip to Second Kings, which is way, hang a hard left, and go on over. It's just before Chronicles. Um, you know, it's right before First Kings. You're looking at um, uh, Samuel. Yeah, it's um, it's after. Um, if you go backwards, it's it's that way. But, uh, you got Samuel. It's in there. Yeah. So um, you have to kind of look upside down and look backwards on this one. But um, so, uh, but the beautiful thing about this is um, is you got when you when you go into uh, when you go into First Kings and Second Kings, you have um, no go. Um, two men. You got Elijah and Elisha. Okay, you got two powerful prophets. Um, Elijah, he was the guy that confronted people. He was very fiery and very confrontational, and um, so, and he exposed the idolatry in Israel. And Elisha was more of a, a little bit more of a delicate man. He dealt more with compassions of people, okay? And uh, he was more caring and loving. You know, you can look at it that way. And he spent less time in conflict, and he spent more time with compassion for the people, okay? Second Kings? Second Kings chapter 6. Yeah, I'm sorry. Chapter 6, 1 through 7. I'm just kind of doing my little warm-up here, and then I'm going to zip through this. Elisha, he was uh, the successor to Elijah, what a leader Elijah was, trained this man up, kind of like Moses and Joshua, you know, uh, Paul and Timothy, Titus, and more probably, you know, and, uh, and David and Solomon. You know, we're in there. So this succession is coming along. Two different men, both powerful, different gifts. And this, that, that's the big point here. Um, he had a major impact on the nations around there and the kings. He spent 50 years in ministry. When you read that, you're like, huh, 50 years? Man, where's the stuff? Where's the time fly? You know what I mean? 50 years in ministry. He was a man of integrity. He didn't enrich himself at others' expense. He was very much, very basic. He was there for the people. Um, he did many miracles. He was a farmer turned prophet. You know, you're thinking, well, there's no God can use me. No way. You know, I'm just this, and I just do that. But God can use anybody. He uses the simple things of this world to confound the wise. He prophesied to the northern kingdom. <clears throat> And he, um, Elisha saw more in life because he recognized that with God, there is more to life. And when, when you are a vessel for God, the way that these men were, that's when God can reach right down there and touch earth on our behalf. And he works right through us. You know, I was, I was, I was actually thinking about this too, as far as like we went down to Mexico I always go back to Mexico because I look. <laughs> I went down there for so many years, 22 years, and um, and it's just amazing that the things that God gets done, and you put all these people together, it's like this big recipe. You know, you got this. You know, you got that. Celery. You got carrots. You got potatoes, and you cut them up and and do this, and you put them all together, and it turns out great. It's just quite a thing. So. Um, he never, um, but he never forgot about the everyday people. See, the scripture that we're going to be reading are between two big pieces of scripture. One of them before is when Naaman, the Syrian, you know, the, the commander was healed of leprosy. 
So that's a big event. And then the other big event is between the nation of Israel was kind of uh, given some uh, saving grace there, and as far as a biggie right there. And then wedged right in the middle is these little events. And that's the one that we're going to be talking about today. Too many times people get focused on the big stuff, but they forget about the little stuff. And that's why many times, um, you know, that, that, that's where these many times people lose focus on this stuff. These little things in life that don't seem like a biggie, are biggies. They really are. And this is why it's, um, it's important that we pray for each other. It's important that we show compassion. You know? It's important that we have understanding, that we listen to. It's important once in a while that we make a phone call, say, hey, or text. Here we are in this modern era. Um, but just being there and laughing with people many times get us through these little things that people overlook that are so important, so important in life. And when we, the, the correlation I saw too was <clears throat> during that movie, The Jesus Revolution, I looked at two different men. You got Chuck Smith and you got Lonnie Frisbee. What a name, huh? Lonnie Frisbee, you know? You know, can you imagine like, What's your bloodline, Lonnie? You know, like uh, California. You know what I mean? You know, you know what country are you from? California. You know, <laughs> you know. It's like I don't know what that is, frisbee. You know, but two different men, and they played two different roles, and they were in two different eras. God brings one in, Lonnie, and uh, man, this man was just on fire, and he was a wild man. I mean, a wild man, and he's just. God used him powerfully, and he brought the people on, and Chuck Smith is just a little on the quieter version there, you know, but, um, but he was training both of these men up at the same time. And then when Lonnie served his purpose for God's purpose, the crowds just got huge. And then, of course, I think Lonnie's pride got in the way there a little bit, you know, and, and Chuck picked up on that, but, but this is a training thing. We're always in class. It produces that harvest of righteousness in those for those that are being trained up by it. Pastors are being trained. Lonnie was being trained. Chuck was being trained on how to deal with these things. We are being trained in our life on how to deal with stuff. And I think the big thing that I guess that I'm trying to say is um, that we, um, God wants us to pick up on the small stuff. Not so much the big people, but the small ones that kind of get caught up in the mix that are still children of God. We're all in this together. We don't want to overlook this. So we can start out in verse 1. <laughs> Here we go. I'm in. They had been voted back on the island. And when, um, when uh, it's, the, the, the caption is, when the axe head floats. Okay, I want to say this one thing. When an axe head floats on water, that's a miracle. Okay? There's a lot of things you see, you're like, wow, that's, that's pretty wild. But when you see certain things, you're like, that is a miracle right there. You know, this stuff just doesn't float. And God will use these simple things that we just kind of like, goes right over our head. And he's like, that's me in action right there. That's me in action. So, starting off, and I think we even have the wrong um, versions here, but uh, the company of the prophets said to Elisha, look, the place where we meet without you, I mean, with, uh, with you is too small for us. So let us go to Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to live. So what, what it is is Elisha is a teacher at this theological seminary center, whatever it is, and he is their teacher. And these are the students. And they're saying, hey, listen, uh, this place is getting too small for us. So we need to get something going a little bit bigger here, okay? And um, so, you know, the growth is good. School growth is great, but, uh, but sometimes you got to be careful when it comes to coming too fast. 
and sometimes um, people are too worried about what looks on the outside when God's looking on the inside. This is why I always have such relief when I look at my brothers and sisters in here because we're grounded. Sure, the paint might be peeling on the outside a little bit. Sure, we have some cracks in the parking lot that I need to deal with that I told Dan I'd help him with. But you know what? God's looking on the inside when men too many times are looking on the outside for these things. So these men, these young men that are in this school are saying, you know what? Let's go and let's start taking care of this. Let's get this place built. And, um, but remember, the inside of this is where the Holy Spirit is. See, they're looking at building, and God's looking at taking care of the inside. We're looking at physical. The Lord's looking at the spiritual end of it the whole time. So this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Growth is good, and it shows our character as we're growing. Our growth in our life, it is, um, it, we show by fruit, our growth. These men recognized Elisha is their man. He's their leader. And they're going to him and they say, you know what? We want to, we want to push on with you. That's good leadership. Remember? See, this is what he's doing. He's passing the torch in a way for down the road. So, in, um, in three, no, and, and then he said, and he said, go. So he gives them encouragement. Many times people don't know exactly what to do. They're like, you know, I just, you know, and, and they will come to you, and you will give them encouragement. You'll be in the word. So you know what? Go. Many times that's what people are waiting for, a word from the Lord, from another person that they can trust, and they said, go, just go ahead and do this. So, you know, and, and, and of course, they, they were all going to go get their own pole. They're going to get their own material. And, um, and I think it's very important, too, that, um, that we um, use good building materials in our lives. You know, it's, it's, it's not like when you go into Home Depot and you, and you walk in. You know, ever notice they always put that clearance section right there by the front door, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, they show the rack of two-by-fours that are on sale for like 85 90% off, you know, and you look at it, you're like, hmm, you know, of course the two-by-fours are, you know, they're all banned, everything's warped and all that, you know, we talked about that, but uh, God wants us to use good building materials in our lives, That's right. good fellowship, you know? Gold, silver, or precious stones versus the wood, hair, the stubble. You know what I mean? He's like, look, I want you to use the good stuff. The good stuff. And it takes a good leader to pick up on this good stuff. That good growth. That good root growth. That's what we need. <laughs> and, I, you know, even sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I, I might be able to utilize that thing. You know what I mean? Kind of salvage that two by four, that 16 footer that's warped about three feet. And, uh, you know. Just wet it down and you know, drive my truck on it, you know, kind of let it dry that way. And, uh, but some of the crazy things that go through our mind. But um, so he, he, he gave them encouragement. He says, go. And they go. And then one of them said, well, won't you please come with your servants? Come with us. He goes, I will. Elisha replied. And he went with them. I like that. He's kind of hanging out with the troops there, you know. And... Um, and I think it's very, very important. Ministry trips have always been one of my favorite when we go to Mexico or do places because you never know what to expect. You never know. I mean, if it's going to happen, it'll, it, it will happen these things. You're like, wow. This, and, and God's like, there you go. The weather can turn sour. Situations can get crazy. And what do you do? You huddle up. Let's huddle up. And let's pray. You know, God's teaching us like he teaches us in our own lives. And we should do that. Huddle up and give it to the Lord. So he goes with them. He spends time with them. He says, I will. They went to the Jordan. And um, 
and they began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. <laughs> All right. There you go. What well, stuff's going to happen, doesn't it? You ever borrow something from somebody, you know, you're thinking, oh, great, you know, man, he broke it or, it, you know, or it's damaged, you know, something like that. You're like, man, you know. And then, of course, an axe head. You ever have an axe head fly off? You know what I mean? Yeah. Every man here, I think, has witnessed that in his life. You know what I mean? Especially when the dogs are around, you're out there cutting real quick for the firewoods, getting ready to rain. All of a sudden, that axe head comes flying off, bounces off that piece of wood, hits the wall. The dogs are jumping, you know, and you're like, man, you know, that is so real in our lives. When things come flying off the handle, you know, you're like, wow, what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? It's just incredible. James 1, Jesus's brother says, consider it all joy, my brothers, for when these, these uh, times come in our life, I'm just kind of throwing this out there, that what do we do? We persevere. Just keep on pushing, man. Keep on pushing. We have been through a crazy time in our country. We've been through crazy times in our lives. And we keep pushing towards Christ. Even through some of these nutty times, a lot of these times, too, it's not even like, like destructive or whatever. You look, you're like, I can't believe this just happened. <laughs> I just cannot believe this. And uh, so, and that's where it's at. And um, so it comes flying off and it's borrowed. So the guy's really concerned. And um, so one of the guys says, he goes, oh my Lord, he goes, and he says, he cried out and says, it was borrowed. In six, the man of God asked, where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it there and made an iron float, and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and he took it. Okay, so when it took off, Elisha, who was known by all the kings, who had respect from world leaders and all that, could have easily gone over and yelled at this guy. Say, so look, fool, what are you doing, man? You got the wrong swing, or you didn't put like a little wedge in there, dummy? You know what I mean? He could have said, you know what? <sighs> really? I don't have to deal with this stupid stuff. This small stuff. This dumb. I don't need this. I've been around the world. I've got all this respect. I don't have to deal with this. But he did. He took the time from someone who was very shallow in his learnings, and Elisha put... You know, he he uh, he took the time. Um, I look at my own life when these things come up. Get involved in a lot of things and all that, but the small stuff means a lot. It means a lot to that person that's telling me. It means a lot. The worst thing in the world I can do is to blow that off. I'm like, whatever. Okay, yeah, 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 just nod and then be done with it. You know, in the Bible, in James, it talks about <coughs> we should be slow to speak. Okay? I mean, quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to anger, okay? Quick to listen. That's a good leader. That's, I've learned through the years, and I'm still learning, to be a good husband, okay? To be a good, you know, father. And I, I have to have these ears on, and I have to be slower to say a bunch of stuff, which I have a tendency to do in my life, you know? I know who I am. And uh, so, but, and it's slow to keep that anger down. And that's what happens. He could have easily fell into that Elijah, but he didn't yell at him. And, uh, but he showed concern. And, um, and so, but this miracle that happened here, you know, granted it wasn't a chariot going up in a, in a blazing fire like Elijah did. And these big time miracles, we're talking a floating axe head. You know? You know, you get all the get all the big the bigs, you know, and uh and they're talking like, what happened to you today? Oh yeah, I took on a big army, you know, yeah, I took down the prophets of Baal, you know, blah blah blah. How about you? I had a floating axe head, man, in the water, you know. <laughs> they're all probably looking at each other thinking, Wow, it's pretty wild, Elijah. Yeah. But you know what? It's the effect. 
that we have on each other. That man was having a profound effect on what was right in front of him right at that point. Okay? Our Lord went to the cross. He was broken. All right? He was broken. And he was separated. Just like that ex. And then he was lifted up. Many times all we have to do is, through our faith, is to reach out and take it, is what we need to do many times. It's really not that difficult. But too many times, we are overlooking the small stuff, you know? And, and I say this, even like with my own life, because I'm like anybody else, we can fall into that. You know, we just kind of maybe sometimes overlook some of this stuff. It's not a big deal. I really don't need to hear about this. I've got other stuff to take care of, big stuff. But people have hearts. These men, they had concerns. It's borrowed. I just broke it. But Elisha was a man of compassion. And he had, you know, remember, God's looking on the inside. He's looking on the inside. And the outside. It's when we don't take care of these things that need to be taken care of. These are the things that come back to haunt us. Like, man, at night you pray, you're like, well, I still got things I can even deal with here. Deal with these things, the small stuff. Because these are all put together. And, uh, but, and, I mean, can you imagine going to the Lord with something kind of we think is small maybe, you know, God... And then hearing in the background, well, that's really stupid. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Wow. Thinking, man, this is exactly what happens when people pick up on the fact that we're just not, we're not really concerned about that. Um, you know, after seeing that movie the other night, you know, it was very touching. And tasty, because I had some of that popcorn, too. With the, uh, you know, I love that, yeah. Um, it was right after we ate, too, you know? Yeah. I don't know what it is about that popcorn, you know? It's like you can get stuffed. And once you hit that, once you open that door, it's like, man, they just permeate that. that they just, there it is, man. It's just, yeah, here you go. You got to have it. But, um, but it, the, the movie was very touching. And it, it, it just kind of pulled us all in. And, and, and we saw how God used these hippies, you know, and some of us here kind of go back into that realm, you know, look around. And uh, I wasn't a hippie. I was more of a freak, you know what I mean? Of course, I walked around barefoot and had long hair and all. But, but that's who God touched. He made a move in society that people like, these guys, like like um, Chuck Smith, he's like, you guys need to clean your act up. That's what they need. You guys need to get a job. You guys need to, you know, and of course, we need to, certain things, but God made a move through these crazy people that the world looked at. But God had something to say to Chuck, and he had something to say to this world. I mean, we see pastors right now that are strong you know, you take like Greg Laurie, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, um, um, you, it's amazing. I mean, when you take a look at that, um, what does it call it? Um, Pirate's Cove? Yeah. Is it Pirate's Cove? Yeah, where they do the baptisms. I know me and Myrna are like, we need to go out there and check that out. Has anybody ever been there before? Have you been, Lynn? That'd be really neat. Yeah. I went to Chuck's church. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Frank, you never been there at Pirate's Cove? No? No. Probably didn't know about it, maybe. Yeah. And, uh. But this was a real, this kind of stirred things up, you know, but um, it did. It stirred up things in my life on how, you know, how God is, he's always there. And he, he's using these things in our lives that we don't really put a whole lot of stock in. But you know what? God's moving. He really is. So God uses the broken. He uses the separated ones. He uses the ones that are hurting and he might even stink it up a little bit, you know? I mean, I've been through there. But because of him 
what he went through, the brokenness, the separation on that cross, and then him getting lifted up. <laughs> if God's for us, then who can be against us? You know, I'm out there over at Robert's house the other day, and I'm putting up a little mailbox for him, and I get a phone call from a buddy over there at the east side, Jim. He goes, I got this homeless guy that I've known for 22 years, and they finally, the cops gave him a ticket for, um, you know, he's living underneath the bridge there, and I'm all, I, I need to find a place for him, you know. So I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking at first, I'm like, ah, I don't want to get that phone call right now. You know, I got the mud going, you know, and, you know, and I'm, I'm putting the block up, and, uh, but I picked it up, and we got to talking, and after I was done, I'm like, Lord, thank you for that phone call. I, I steered Steve, a good friend of mine, Steve Wright on the east side, on what to do. I called the person up that I know, because I go to the mission quite a bit, and I know the person that does the intake over there at the mission. So I called them, I kind of got all the time frames down and everything, blah, 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 got them set, got to call them back, got it all set up, he's going to take them in tomorrow morning and all. And um, I just took that time. I could easily blown that off. And it's kind of funny, too, because I got the Wilbur going, and as I'm talking, <clears throat> I'm sitting there trying to, I'm talking on one of them, and I got my trial, and I keep mixing it. You know, I'm like this. God don't care about that. He'll give you the strength to get through these moments. It might be a little bit of an inconvenience, but I'll tell you what, the dividends are big. This was a little thing, but you know what? This is a big thing. <coughs> you know, so I, and, and who was blessed? They were blessed. I was blessed. And kept going with the mailbox. And it's looking pretty good. So to that I say, pick up on these things. Don't overlook, you know, wherever you're at, at home, at work, with family, here, friends. Spend that time. Get down in those ditches a little bit. Pick up because a lot of the bigs, they don't want to go down there. A lot of the big churches, I'm not saying Calvary. I'm just saying a lot, there's a lot of them out there. Churches, they're too busy worried about what the building looks like versus what's inside. Okay? Amen? We're on time. Lord, thank you for, uh, <clears throat> for your word. It's very, <laughs> it's very encouraging. And it's very interesting, too, Lord, how it applies in our lives. So, God, I just pray for all of us here that we can just keep pushing forward with you, Father, that we would never be deceived. Please. And that's where we stay in fellowship. And with the course of that, too, Lord, that, um, that we would always be on the lookout for those that are hurting. You know, there's a lot of small stuff out there that we look at, but you know what? It's big. It's big. So, Father, I thank you for our congregation here, Lord. And I just pray that you just continue to bless Dan and Shannon on their special weekend. And we thank you for them, too. And, um, you know, I want to lift up Jen. I know she's been sick. Um, and many other people here, too that have been sick, you know, welcome back, Frank. I mean, just a lot of things to know. You know, we, we, we're a body. We're your children. And we appreciate what you do in our lives, that we could have your eyes on and we can be looking for those in these moments that we just can't figure out, but you do. So, Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.